The news broke last night that the Miami Marlins finally, after all of these years, as it says here in this stupid ESPN article, which I won't bore you with, I'm just using it as backdrop until we get into the actual, actual important details, they finally broke the gender barrier and hired the first female, and she's Asian, so they also broke that barrier as well. The first female general manager in the big four sports, I'm Congratulations, I was immediately hit with a little bit of a inquisitive thought. It's like, okay, this is the Miami Marlins who's doing this after all, and they will literally do anything outside of, you know, signing and maintaining a good ball club in order to generate positive attention and crowd support. So it didn't really shock me the fact that it was the Marlins who did this, but I had no idea who Kim Eng was. So I decided to do a little bit of digging around, and it looks like she has been around everywhere. Not that kind of way, but she previously worked in the commissioner's office and before that she was an assistant general manager with the very successful period for the New York Yankees and as well with the Dodgers for a little bit prior to starting to work in the commissioner's office and she was also interning for the White Sox so she has a very long history of working in professional baseball so you know that's a good thing this isn't just a token hire I like to see that it's not a question of if Kim Eng is going to shatter sports' biggest glass ceiling, it is only a matter of when. And I went back and I found a bunch of older articles to see if I can find any track record of when she was a assistant general manager, what she actually did, but I couldn't really find anything other than she brought a arbitration case when she was an intern for the White Sox for a pitcher, but... Uh, Oh, okay, that just sounds like regular fucking intern duties, so. Let's see, at least she gets a glowing review from Paul Beeston, who all you old school Blue Jays fans out there uh, should have a near and dear little piece of your sports fan heart out there for him. So he put together those two great championship teams. Aang's hiring is the first female general manager in one of the big four pro sports may be imminent as she'll soon be interviewing for the vacancy with the Los Angeles Angels. She didn't get that job, by the way. It's the third time she's been interviewed. Oh, she's been in the running for a GM post and Blue Jays president Paul Beeston is convinced she'll be one to make sports history. Now, Paul Beeston worked in the commissioner's office for a very long time, so she would have worked alongside Paul. So this endorsement does mean something this isn't just some old executive coming out and saying some nice things about the nice lady she's been in the commissioner's office she's been with the dodgers she's been with the yankees two not insignificant teams so that's why it's kind of a bit of a step down and you know if you know baseball it makes sense that the marlins would do this but yeah working with the dodgers and the yankees uh come on now that's a little bit of prestige, and when she worked with the Yankees, it was 98, 99, 2000, and 2001, and those weren't fucking slouch years. All four of those years, they made it to the World Series. She knows the entire baseball landscape, said Beast, and she's smart, she's personable. The only obstacle would be the obvious ones, clubhouses and that kind of thing, but I'm not certain that's even an obstacle because a lot of general managers don't even go into the clubhouse, so that's kind of a dig at general managers and not so much anybody really having to deal with the general manager because they're a lot of barriers between actually having to deal with somebody who makes all the X's and O's or gives all the X's and O's to the manager. So, eh, does it really matter? I don't think that there should be a big to do about the fact that, yeah, okay, uh, there's a woman who's going to be making the trades if she knows the sports. Everybody knows that one chick who was very, very deep and did some sport when they were growing up. Like when I played football, I had a couple of girls on my team so then again they were just a kicker so whatever but yeah whenever you see these diversity hires i just immediately want to go in there and figure out if they have a long history with the game and see if this isn't just some kind of token hire like okay nba has a bunch of women assistant coaches and by a bunch i mean like a handful so but they are all very uh distinguished players so don't really have a lot of like having Becky Hammond on the San Antonio Spurs coaching staff. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. That isn't just, oh, we just need a woman to fill a quota. No, uh, a several-time champion and uh, one of the best WNBA players in history, which isn't necessarily a high bar. But yeah, she, uh, Kim Eng here gets a glowing endorsement from Paul Beeston, which, like I said, should not be diminished by with any capacity. But let's take a look at uh, her past. She did a Q&A a while back with 
some Chicago newspapers, and it really just details the fact that, yeah, in 1990, she started as an intern with the White Sox when she was about 29, and then, yeah, ended up being assistant general manager for the New York Yankees during their great times, and then moved on from there for a long time, for a few years, I should say, with the Dodgers, so... If you're in the know, if you're doing some inside baseball, you knew that this was eventually going to come down the pike. So what kind of an executive is she? Is she one of these people that uh, exclusively relies upon numbers, like how the Houston Astros were put together? Are they more by feel like a bunch of the old school institutions? I could kind of see her as somewhat of a moderate. She uses a bunch of the new analytics, and she also goes a lot by feel because, well, uh, you've worked in the Dodgers organization, which in the recent times has kind of revolutionized the way that they do their scouting with a lot more analytics, but there's still a bunch of old school guys there that really just go by, you know, by feel and what their eyes tell them. And well, they kind of put together a significant winner here. So here's one of the questions that I just wanted to highlight. You've worked in scouting and player development. How do you balance statistics and an intuitive sense of the player? It's an interesting time in our game. I think we're seeing that decisions that have been made leading oh, leaning way heavily towards numbers doesn't always work out either. I really try to look at both. It depends on what area you're looking at. Game decisions are very different than signing free agents. With game decisions, you have a lot more data that you can go on because of sample size. How many pitches does a player see over the course of a season? A ton. So I'm just looking at the numbers in a season. No. You need a deep you need to dive deeper. You have advanced scouts who sit and watch the teams you're going to face. They know exactly how these players respond in certain situations and that you might not have cataloged into your system. There are things that advanced scouts pick up that you might not have thought about, which is an excellent way to do it. You know, use the technology to assist. Don't use it as an exclusive means of coming to a conclusion because that's how you Just make terrible, terrible decisions. All the successful hedge fund managers, all the successful entrepreneurs out there use their technology in order to enhance their decision making and not exclusively make their decision making. So that's definitely a great thing that Aang is putting forward here. The only thing that gives me pause here is going into the Chicago Tribune article from, yeah, 2018 when she was just moving into the commissioner's office job that she held until, yeah, getting hired by the Marlins here. As a public policy major and softball player at the University of Chicago, not that part, Kim Eng wrote a thesis paper on Title IX, opening her eyes to the challenges and opportunities for women in career with a career in sports. Title IX is a pernicious and evil piece of legislation that requires equal treatment. It purports to, at least, propose equal treatment between payment and sports at the college level between females and males sports. Now, it's been extrapolated further out there to handicap certain aspects of each gender's sports teams, and um, hopefully she understands that. I couldn't find the thesis paper, so I'm sure that's probably... A point of private record but everything else that we find here is you know pretty bog standard stuff it's stuff that if you remove the name from the title of the paper or the subject of the article it would just seem like standard fucking shit like this hiring does not come out of left field whatsoever she's been around the game for the better part of 20 years held a bunch of different high-ranking positions that would eventually lead her one day to be the general manager of a sports team it's yeah Somebody I was really shocked to see, well, especially, you know, five letters, not knowing who the hell this was, but uh, understanding that, yeah, she has a long history in the game. And yeah, if there was any team out there with all of their gimmicks and all of their frills, it was definitely going to be the Marlins and somebody who she really has a track record with and Derek Jeter. Yeah, he owns the Miami Marlins. So it would only make sense that somebody who had a pretty significant say in what happened during the last time the Yankees were a sustainable dynasty. It makes sense that uh, somebody would come along and fill that spot for the Miami Marlins. Let's see how she does in the offseason here before we make uh, too many assumptions about her job. Based on her track record, it looks like she'll do a pretty decent job. Let's see if she can stand up to the other associates 
and the full-fledged general managers themselves, but working in the commissioner's office, you had a lot of time to interact with a bunch of high-ranking officials. So I think that she'll probably be able to ne negotiate everything fine. And you know what? Her successes are going to be overly amplified and her setbacks are going to be underreported. But whenever you see one of these hirings, um, you know, that's always the little caveat. But I wish her nothing but the best. And yeah, I really couldn't find anything that would give me a total pause as to saying that this was merely a diversity hire. Somebody who has a long track record. All in all, let's see how this plays out. I look forward to the next Major League Baseball season anyways when we can finally start getting fans back into the stands and maybe we can put this Black Lives Matter shit to rest. How about that, guys? Anyways, I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.